Back in 1973, David Coverdale was plucked from obscurity by Richie Blackmore, who was looking to find a replacement for Ian Gillan in Deep Purple. Since then, Coverdale has worked with Jimmy Page and the short-lived Coverdale Page project, but it's his time in Whitesnake, in all its various lineups, that really defines his stellar career. Recently, I went to meet up with David at his home in Reno, Nevada, in what might just be one of his most revealing interviews yet. Meet me on the banks of Lake Tahoe, Orny, said David. I duly obliged. And here I go again. David. Oh, do you heart? <laughs> how are you doing, man? I'm good. What, the, are you? what are you doing here? This well, is back of the woods. Well, it's it's a pleasure to see you. And you do I'm heart. here because I want to have a, a long chat with you about your your wonderful career. And I've come to Lake Tahoe. Yeah. I mean, this is astonishing. It's just amazing. Well, I've lived I lived in um, L.A. for some time both in West Hollywood, you know, back at Beverly Hills, back in the purple days, so. And once, really, to be honest, once Whitesnake started to sell an embarrassing amount of records, um, and they were moving me to Florida and all this, I'm going, get out of here, I've just got my foot in the door in, in the music business, which at that time was Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, what's the closest place? And somebody said, have you ever heard of Lake Tahoe? And I've been an Olympics fan, I'd heard of Squaw Valley and stuff, mm. and I said, yeah, how far is it away? It's just an hour and change on a flight, and I went, let's buy something, you know. So we got a bunch of pictures of this place, and we bought a house and uh, established a residency here back in 87. It's very different to... 1887, that is, boys and girls. <laughs> before it's... the gold rush, before the old king died. It's so different, though, isn't it? I mean, here from Los Angeles, it's not oh. like, like the, the music center of the no. world. Do, I, I mean, is there a, one senses that there's a real community here. Are you, you know, part of that community? Well, yeah, you know, certainly with having a child uh, by living here, you know, the local school and uh, we help put the actual school together. And uh, so that, that integrates you with the community. They're really protective of my privacy, uh, whereas Los Angeles was becoming ridiculous. You couldn't sit down and, and have breakfast or lunch or whatever without, you know, without it being interrupted. You yep. know, so yep. basically it was kind of self-survival as well as tax reasons. And first off, I had a, um, a, a beautiful like condominium they call it over here in a super development, and my I spent one night in it. <laughs> After the long drive, I'd finished an 18-month tour. You know, yeah. so I came up and it was pitch 1.30 in the morning, pitch black, and I went to bed with a wasp nest up my bits and pieces and, and woke up with it still flourishing. I went down, got a coffee, opened the drapes, and this, the, yeah. and, you know, zombie-like, I walked down all of these steps to a, a boat dock and just sat there. The metaphor or analogy I use is like having rusty armor after a medieval campaign, and it just all started dropping off. Just like I felt absolutely soul connection in, in, in this environment. What is it that you miss, if anything, about the UK? Oh, I've totally bonded in, in heart connection, soul connection. You know, I meditate every day and, uh, you know, I can be exactly, I can be in Saltburn, I can be in London walking. It's, it's, it's very easy for me to be connected to any, any part of the world, particularly uh, where I was born and raised, New Yorkshire. But you, do, you, you miss salt. I mean, this could not well, be no, more I'm, different. This could not be more different. Well, my family's here, matter. Nikki. The big, the big deal is my son's American, my wife's American. You know, I've, I've assimilated into this environment. I'm both. I'm half and half. You know. Um, yes, because you're, a, you're a, an American citizen. And yeah, and you I want to be. Nationality. Yeah. Well, number one, it was always really difficult for me to go through uh, customs and, and, uh, and immigration and separate from my wife and son. I didn't care for that at all. Um, so, and the other thing was, I wanted instead of being an armchair uh, uh, politician or whatever, I wanted to, to express my opinions as far as voting was concerned. It was immensely important for me because I, I truly love my adopted country, and uh, I think you know its destiny is to be that of a beacon of democracy. And 
and, uh, and, and at, at this particular time when I applied for my uh, citizenship, it wasn't. Right. You know, it's embracing our old imperialist adventures. I'll tell you what, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that. I want to talk about what you're currently doing because you're you're making a DVD. You're standing here looking you're, at you're, you're, you're picture about, postcards. You're, for... you're about to come to the UK. You're going to yes. be playing uh, the Rambling Man Festival. Yeah. So I want to talk and see some of this DVD stuff. Um, and I want to go to your uh, recording studio. Okay. So um, The fabled fan- mythical Hook City. Do you fancy... Um, Driving me down the mountain to your... Well, like uh, comedians getting Indeed, coffee. yes. It, <laughs> okay. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Yeah, right, absolutely. okay, let's go. Well, and while we, Great while to we, see you, man. While go we on. do that, we're going to look at one of your old videos. Oh, okay. Um, where I have to say your Which hair. one, by the way? Which old well, video? I'll, you say I'll, old. Let, I'll, I'll let you choose. You can choose. Whichever no, one you like. No, I don't know. I don't know. You pick them. I, I, How about Still of the Night? Oh, are you kidding? Yeah. 